What's going on, Weekend Hangover Nation? I'm your boy Surf, and I'm back. All right, so that time of year again. Guys, it's undrafted season. We just passed the NFL draft, talking about some guys just trying to make it into the rosters. And to be honest, this is my favorite time of year. I love finding diamonds in the rough, man. I love being able to be wrong about 10 dudes, but then be right about a Preston Williams last year when multiple Miami journalists were saying he was just another guy. Okay, okay. What can I say? Crappy franchises usually have crappy journalists. All right, <laughs> enough to toot my own horn, enough to pat myself on the back. Let's see if we can find another Preston Williams in this class. All right, so today I'm talking about the Green Bay Packers and they're undrafted all. I want to start out with Patrick Taylor. He's a running back out of Memphis. And when I say a guy is a load to bring down, that totally emphasizes Taylor's game. The former Tiger was a touchdown scorer, man. During his four-year career, he had 39 touchdowns. He's, he stands at 6'1", 217 pounds, and Taylor is built like a rock, all muscle, and he runs like it. Bounces off of would-be tacklers with ease, but there's a downside to being that muscle-bound, and you can see it in Taylor's tape. I mean, he has a tendency to run just way too upright and stiff, especially for a back who's going to have to carve out short yardage work. I mean, it's a stick, and he's going to have to be Marion Barber. Leverage is not his friend. I'm just going to put that out there. Now, if you're looking for a back who's going to bounce outside and take it to the house, you're looking in the wrong direction here with Taylor. Taylor's a straight line, train style back, man, a full locomotive. When he hits the open field, he's more likely to go through somebody than he is to try to make you miss, which I could definitely appreciate. I mean, you don't get that too often, but that's definitely him. The Packers drafted A.J. Dillon, who's similar in the respect that they're both power backs. This indicates that Green Bay wanted to beef up behind the speedy era Jones, which would make sense. If you remember the Eagles game last year against the Packers, they had like 20 plays inside the one, and they just could not punch it home. It happens. Okay, so next I want to talk about a kid named Travis Bruffy. He's an offensive tackle from Texas Tech. Experience, size, and positional versatility. Bruffy has all the makings of a solid developmental tackle. He played in 46 games over his four-year career at Tech, starting at various times on both sides of the line left tackle, right tackle. He's got experience at both. He's raw as most air raid tackles are. It's just something about guys who have to block for two steps on a third and one or don't have to hold a block for more than two seconds. You know what I mean? It's it's something about that spread guys just really struggle when they come to the NFL, at least early on. So he's got some workable tools though. He's not the most athletic tackle and he doesn't possess the longest arms, but I think he I think you could stash him. I think you could work with something there. All right, so next I want to talk about a kid named Delante Scott. He's an edge at SMU. Green Bay grabbed a couple of edges in the undrafted market. Why I chose Scott as the best to make the team is pretty simple. The man walks the walk, and you know what I mean? He talks the talk, man. Looks like Tarzan during his senior season. He played like Tarzan. He's 6'5", 250 pounds, and his senior stats read as follows. 39 tackles, 17 for a loss with 9 sacks. Scott's got long arms. He doesn't have the fastest get-off. He's not the twitchiest individual in the world. But he is explosive at the point of contact. He will tackle through you and drive you through the ground and play through the whistle. I love it. Next, I want to talk about a kid named Stanford Samuels. He's a cornerback at Florida State. Like the edge, corner was another position that the Packers addressed heavy in the undrafted signings. I chose Samuels as my pick for best corner of the group. It's simple because I love his length. He's 6'1", 187 pounds. He's a little light, especially for his physical play style, but you can always put in work at the weight room. That's something you can definitely work on. I watched a lot of Samuels at Florida State, and the trait I absolutely love the most about him is his deep ball tracking. He gets his head turned around, finds the ball, and makes a play on it. Doesn't always intercept it, but he makes a play on the ball. He's really especially good at that. Now, Samuels has a tendency to be way too physical in coverage, which to me is an indication of lack of confidence, which is weird for a guy who's so good at deep ball tracking. But I get it. He's not the fastest corner, especially for a guy who's who's a, who's light. You would expect him to be a little quicker on his feet. So he has a tendency to get grabby. He gets beat. He grabs. He presses. He grabs. That's a bad habit to break, but again, it's teachable. All right, guys, so this has been another Weekend Hangover production. I'm your boy, Surf. Hit us up with a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Catch you guys later. Peace.